everyone, welcome back. This is episode 5 of my Learning to Program PLCs with Structured Text video series. On the last few episodes, I talked about programming your first program, getting the environment set up, um, data types, and operators. So we have a sort of a functional knowledge now of how to run this thing, so we're going to run through a scenario, and in the process I'm going to go uh, introduce uh, function blocks, timers, and uh, triggers. So we've got our twin cat open here. Got my project created, saved in the main program here. So uh, I'm ready to start defining variables on this top half. So what do we need to do for uh, a pizza oven? So we're gonna automate a pizza oven here. So when the pizza goes in, we're gonna sense it. Once the timer's elapsed, we will uh, put a, an alarm or a buzzer or a light on. And then after that, we're gonna count how many pizzas we've cooked. So that should take care of learning all our new things. So um, the first thing we need to know and have a variable to know about is uh, whether there's a pizza in in the oven or not. So um, we'll go ahead and do that as a boolean, which would be like a digital input, like a sensor or a switch or something like that. So, so we know when the pizza's in the oven, we need to know how long to leave it in the oven. So a good way to do that is uh, making instantiating a function block here and so what this does is we'll make a timer called a T on and it will accumulate time anytime its input is true and it'll set an output when it's done so it handles all the scan time converting that to real time uh, which is really nice so I sometimes like to put comments here and just explain um, what it is so if it's not perfectly obvious you know my timer is not the greatest name so I'll tell it now oh, it's cook time so we also need to know when it's done. So we'll do a B buzzer, um, which would be a boolean. So this would be a, a buzzer or a light or something like that. So um, let's see. Uh, the other thing we want to do is count total pizzas. So pizzas cooked, something like that. And so I'll make that a dent, although since we don't have a negative number of pizzas cooked ever, we'll make that a U dent so that instead of having four billion billion pizzas um, you know we can we can hold four billion billion until we roll over versus just four billion or whatever the numbers are uh, with a dent so that's good you should probably keep that in mind that when it gets to the biggest number possible it's gonna roll back to zero it's gonna look like we only made ten pizzas when we've made billions of pizzas so um, anyway just keep that in mind for projects that actually matter uh, so starting out we will uh, pizza in the oven. So we need to know is there a pizza in the oven. So if be pizza in oven then so we will do fb my timer and it gives you a little hint on what these are. So the input obviously is the input to the timer. Does it accumulate or not? pt is the amount of time the timer will run for before the, it sets the output which is q. et lets you handle um, if you want to have a status running as the timer is going, you can find out how far along the timer is and stuff like that. So um, anyway, so we need to set it in equals true when there is a pizza in the oven. And PT is the total time, and we'll do T pound 10 minutes. So this T pound syntax is basically what the time data type is. Uh, it expects that as a literal. So. Um, that's how you can set uh, 10 minutes and 30 seconds or something like that. So it's a pretty cool data type that lets you input in real human sort of numbers and it takes care of the rest for you, which is which is awesome. So basically now Q is going to be true after 10 minutes in the oven. So we'll say if FB my timer dot Q, then B buzzer equals true. And then if not, then oh, I hate that. B buzzer equals false. So I'll save my project here. And actually, I'm going to switch this to uh, about six seconds. We're going to have a really fast oven so I don't waste everybody's time. We'll log on, online change. So if there's a pizza in the oven here, uh, forgive me, I, let me reset. This is from a test one. So I will reset the origin log in, download the program. So this is all brand new variables, everything's good. So if I run pizza in the oven, oh sorry, let me run the program first. We're going, I don't have my heartbeat anymore so I can't see it's running, but I know it is. Um, so 
I'll go ahead and set pizza in the oven true. So you'll notice on this ET here, after six seconds, the Q value right above it, boom, it's true. And it's gonna stay true um, until we reset that timer. So that's a problem we have. Basically the buzzer's on, I can turn the pizza off now, but this timer's still true. It never ran. As soon as this pizza came out of the oven, it quit running the timer, so it never reset it, which then left Q uh, down at zero. So um, basically we need to fix that. So let's log off. Instead of this, this is not really the best way to do it. So we'll get rid of this if statement because we don't care if the uh, pizza's in the oven or not, the timer cares in this case. So we'll set timer into pizza and oven, log in, online change, and then when, whoops, I can't turn that true. So when I turn uh, the pizza in the oven true, it also will time, let's verify, it's timing. The buzzer's on, we remove the pizza, and the buzzer's off. So we've perfectly triggered that to, uh, to handle when the pizza's done only. Um, and then once it's removed, it's automatically, uh, the buzzer goes off. So uh, that's pretty good. So let's, uh, let's count these pizzas up. Okay, so we're gonna come down here. When everything's done, total pizzas cooked equals total pizzas cooked plus one. So really, we only want to do that when the timer has elapsed. So let's log in with that and see what happens. Whoops, there I do go again. Uh, so the pizza's in the oven. We're accumulating time. And Q is true. But you can see that's a problem. We're accumulating pizzas every every scan of the PLC that the pizza is still in the oven. As soon as I take the pizza out of the oven, of course that quits running and we don't get that. So we're clearly in the need of a, of a way to only do this a single time. So a cool way to do that is with an R trig. So I'm going to come in here. I'm gonna, I like to keep my function blocks pretty close together. Sometimes I'll do like trigs and timers, things like that. So here, this trigger is another FB, it's another function block that needs instantiated, and we'll call it my trigger, and it's of type R trig. So let's call that um, pizza counter. And really, I can call the name of it my pizza counter or my R trig or whatever it is. And sometimes, actually, I like to do this too R trig on the end of it. So uh, essentially, moving on. I need to trigger on uh, the timer elapsing. So I'm gonna put that in, and the inputs of trigger are a clock and a queue. Clock, queue. So my timer.queue, and that's it. I just need to run that. And so let me clear some space here. So in my program, if FB my trigger dot Q if its output goes on come on then um, we need to increment our pizzas so increment equals that plus one and actually plus plus like pizzas plus plus doesn't work it's pretty unfortunate um, but anyway so what happens here let me get my notepad or my uh, paint out so what happens here We'll draw a timing diagram. So there's zero, there's one. So this will be one, this will be zero. And here's the uh, the Q value. So we're going a long time here and all of a sudden our timer elapsed. So Q comes up. Then Q stays on until the pizza is removed and Q goes off and we're done. So what we did that first time was every time Q was on we were accumulating which is bad, we are da, 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 accumulating over and over again. So what we do now though, is we feed this Q into the R trig. And so the Q of the R trig, since it's a different function type, will take that, and what it does is when its clock goes true, I'm gonna draw them shifted a little bit, just so you can see them, but these happen on the same scan. Um, so when its clock comes true here, it will be on for one scan, 
and then its output goes off. So when its input comes on, its output goes on. So this is the uh, rtrig q value comes on for one scan. So if we put our uh, increment, our plus plus inside that one scan, then it only happens once. So let's do it in code. If so, we're triggering here. Oh, actually, I need to do clock equals that. And then if the queue comes on, it'll do this one time for every time it gets the trigger. So every time the timer elapses, it's going to increment. So let's try that. Um, and actually, let's uh, knock this down to three seconds. Save online. So we'll put a pizza in the oven. And let's watch our timer. It elapsed. And oops, I forgot to set this to zero. We already had 200 pizzas. So the pizza comes out. Pizza goes in. Buzzer on. Pizza's cooked one. So then we come back. We take the pizza out. I'll run through this one more time. Pizza out. Pizza's going back in. The next pizza. One, two, three. Pizza done. Now we've got two. So this code at the moment, even though we're static, nothing's happening here, it's running through here and it's waiting on something to do. And basically, um, that's it. Now, one other thing I wanted to talk about is you can clean this up quite a bit. So if my timer equals Q, or sorry, if my timer dot Q is true, then set buzzer true. This is a long way of saying this. Just set it equal. And if you have to run this, but you can also, um, yeah, you can make that a little smaller, but let's not worry about it. So, but basically, that's all the code you need for what we did. So, we've got an accumulator of total pizzas, we've got a pizza in the oven that's tracked for time, and an alarm that gets set off. So, uh, you can go a long way with just this level of coding. Um, I highly recommend state machines, which I'll cover in a, another video but if you just know how to do triggers and timers you can actually get quite a lot of stuff done um, you got to be real careful though because all this code pretty much runs at once so you need to be real careful about that um, you know this diagram of the per trigger you got to be careful of uh, how often your code's running especially when you start sequencing a lot of code and you know running it in quote unquote parallel because you can have tons of programs over here so um, all this code just runs like ch -ch 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 -ch, but it runs so fast and as long as you don't loop it in then it's it sort of seems like all these programs run in parallel which is really cool so uh, anyway this video is long enough um, on the next video I'm gonna dive a little bit deeper so uh, check it out if you want the links should be in the description below like and subscribe if you like these videos and I'll keep making more